in case you did not know, today is Earth Day. And what started as a university observance in the United States is now an international event celebrated in some 192 countries. Last week, the Global Adaptation Institute, also known as GAIN, was given to Notre Dame University by Ken Hirsch, a leading figure in the oil and gas industry. This de declaration, along with a donation of $2 million, places a much needed focus on adaptation. Joining us this morning from South Van, Indiana, is Jessica Hellman, Associate Professor of Biology at the University of Notre Dame and the head of the Climate Change Adaptation Program. Jessica, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Happy Earth Day. Thank you. Happy Earth Day to you. Let's start off with a really basic question. What is climate adaptation? Well, at climate change, well, adaptation is the sort of counterpoint to mitigation. So we talk about solving the climate change crisis. We mean stopping the um, emission of greenhouse gases. But adaptation is about living with the climate change that we've already caused. And climate change is here and now, and it's affecting people's lives. And so we need, we think that this issue of how we're going to live with a changing climate is really important around the world. And, and climate change adaptation is about how we're going to go about doing that. Got it, got it. So many would say the fact that uh, Superstorm Sandy, as it became to, came to be known in the media, was a result of climate change. Uh, so tell me about how adaptation then took place as a result of Hurricane Sandy or Superstorm Sandy. Well, Sandy gave us a, a crash course in what's necessary to, in dealing with climate change. Because uh, Sandy was a hurricane, it affected coastal communities, it affects infrastructure and people who live along the coast. And so now we need to think about what does it mean to live along the coast? Should be, we, we be fortifying or retreating from the shorelines? But climate change is not just along the coast, it's, it's everywhere. So climate change adaptation includes things like changing agricultural practices or changing how we live in cities or even changing how we manage nature and ecosystems. Jessica, what is the significance about the GAIN donation to Notre Dame in the first place? What does this mean for the organization? Well, what's really exciting about GAIN, it's already being used by a lot of decision makers and it takes a whole lot of technical information about the vulnerability to climate change and the ability to adapt and condenses it into a in a form that people can easily consume. So we at, the, at a university can do research and now we have this tool that helps us translate that research directly into the hands of people who need it and can make decisions on it. Jessica, there is a large group of people out there who simply do not believe that climate change is even real. They're often referred to as climate change deniers. How then can you speak to climate change when you're dealing with some individuals that simply don't recognize its existence? Well, as a climate scientist or as a scientist who works with climate change, I know the, that the scientific literature is pretty overwhelming that climate change is real. But interestingly about adaptation, you can see that we need to adjust to the climate and how the climate is changing as Sandy and the heat wave of last year in the United States demonstrated. We need to be living with a changing climate regardless of what you might think the source of climate change is. The data overwhelmingly suggests that it's human emissions of greenhouse gases, but other natural factors are changing the climate too. And this is, adaptation is about helping people to live in a new, different kind of world. So I actually think it's an issue around which a, a larger number of people can sort of come together and be helpful and productive and design new solutions. Ken Hirsch has declared that climate denial is over, speaking to the point that Christina just made about so many people still denying the fact that it actually uh, happens. How is it important for someone like him to make that declaration? Yeah, Ken is really a leader in the um, oil and natural gas industry. And uh, Ken is not new to understanding and appreciating climate science and what scientists know about climate change. But I think that he could be influential in helping to bring along other members of his community and to help us communicate uh, the significance of this climate change issue. So we're very excited to be partnering with Ken and anyone who wants to join forces to come up with solutions to improve people's lives and livelihoods. Jessica, you have something called the GAIN Index. What is that? 
The gain index is this uh, is the sort of main product that has come from the Global Adaptation Institute, the product that will be coming to the University of Notre Dame, and it is this. It is a number. It's a measure of two different things. One is how vulnerable is a country? It's a country level index to climate change, things like uh, storms and droughts, and. It also measures how ready a country is to actually deal with climate change. So things like uh, political stability or education level. And then it ranks every country. So each country can see where they stand. And countries can see who's doing well. And countries can see where they need to be making improvement. And this can help decision makers and investors and the public and charities decide who's most in need of assistance in dealing with this climate. And do you know where we stand, the United States, on this index and what can be done to move us up? We do pretty well. I think uh, off the top of my head, I believe we're 15th in the ranking. So that's, that's good, but that's mostly because we are fairly wealthy. We have a lot of resources at our disposal. But interestingly, the, if you take the gain index and you can remove, and you can do this on the website, you can remove um, the effect of GDP. So if you can sort of divide by how wealthy a country is and look at how well it's doing independent of its resources. And the United States actually quite moves down the list quite a bit, I think, into the 60s. Uh, so it suggests that on the one hand, we, we should have quite a bit, of, a bit of capacity to deal with climate change. But it also suggests that relative to our abilities, we have a lot of vulnerabilities and we haven't taken very many steps to prepare for climate change. As the old folks in my church used to say, may not be where we need to be, but sure not where we used to be, right? Yeah, but on the other hand, this is, a, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to come together and do what we can to make the world a better place and combine science and, and decision making. Jessica Hellman, thank you very much. Thank you. And happy Earth Day again.